good. I had this idea in my mind today and I was just really sick of typing, really sick of typing. I wanted to be able to type out like detailed um, transcripts into, well, I want like detailed prompts and things into, into AI or to other things I'm doing. And I thought, I just want to build something on my computer that I can do this. Um, and I already ha had just downloaded or in the last couple of days, I downloaded a, a Google Chrome plugin. So I can, whenever I'm on my, uh, whenever I'm anywhere in my screen, I can, I can go control shift here, testing this out to demo while I'm creating a video. So yeah, I didn't have to actually type it. It actually just, um, transcribes it really, really simply for me. And so I found this Chrome plugin that can do it on, on, on any website. So that's great, but I wanted to be able to do it in my Microsoft teams and I wanted to be able to do it in, um, uh, like my coding, uh, like programming applications like cursor or visual studio. I wanted to be able to do it in text files. Uh, and so that wasn't, you can't do that with a Google Chrome plugin. So I had this idea and I was like, okay, how hard can it be? How hard can it be, particularly for AI, like O1, uh, particularly O1 from Chat from OpenAI? So what I did was I just um, used my Google Chrome plugin to transcribe a detailed prompt, and then came back to me with basically a step-by-step -step process of how to actually do it. So I needed to, you'll see here that, um, you know, like a few months ago, maybe maybe six months ago, I didn't even know what this was, like command prompt. I mean, it's just so it was so foreign to me, right? But then it, it tells me to open my, it tells me exactly what I should do. Open your command prompt and run the following commands. So I basically just followed the process here. I loaded those all up. Some of them I already had from uh, other things that I've been um, doing and building. And then it gave me this entire Python script around how to do it. So um, I copied the script and then I put it into Visual Studio here. So you'll see that um, I just created it. I opened a file in, in this existing playground that I had. And by the way, I've hardly used Visual Studio, um, probably opened it for the first time less than six months ago and pasted it in. This wasn't the final product, by the way. This wasn't, it, it wasn't, it was, it was about 60 rows when I first started and it didn't actually really work the first time I'll have to say, like it didn't really work. I also didn't like the hot keys that it, that it uh, chose for me initially it, that didn't really work. Um, so I played around, I played around, it gave me an error. Uh, one of the times as well, it looked like uh, I needed to import something else that it didn't have in the code the first time around. Then I went through some, yeah, so like I had to install something else. I don't even know what the request library is, but it definitely helped me in this, in this case, I had to change uh, this a little bit as well, the transcribe audio. So I was, I was just copying and pasting and then I wanted to change it to control shift. Like I, like I have with my Google Chrome plugin. But this eventually didn't work, by the way, so I had to change it again. So it gave me a full script. Then I was like, I want to um, go over it and use some different models as well. I want to get some help with some different models. So I went to Data Mentor, which is our technology, Enterprise DNA's technology. And you'll see here that I started building up a thread. So I, piped, I typed in the code and then I, I, I initially chose the code extender tool. And I chose uh, Claude, Claude Sonnet 3.5, because Claude is uh, very, very good at, at coding. Whole, this is Python code. It's, it's um, better known for like website coding and uh, etc. But it still was very good here. So I was able to just get some code refinements. Um, initially, we had hotkeys like that. Also, one of the one of the issues I had was when it when it typed out my transcript. So I was playing around with it. I was testing it as I was going. Uh, when I was when I was typing out the um, the script, it was very slow. And I was like, and I was wondering why, why is it so slow? And so you'll see here that as I go down this thread, um, yeah, so I, I, I optimized the, um, optimize the hotkey. And then I put in here the actual transcription part of it. So, you know, one of the things that I've been doing like, is I've been getting better at coding. Like I can't write this out. I, I, there's no way I could write this out from scratch, but I, I'm starting to really understand it just because I've done a lot of testing i've been playing around with a lot of code and i've been teaching myself um, the structure of code the architecture of code and so i kind of knew where to look even though AI i can tell you anyway but i kind of knew where to look and you'll find that um yeah it was here it was here that was a very slow piece of code and so 
I grabbed it, I put it into Data Mentor, and then what it came back with was this new function, this new function called Fast Paced Text. And um, it did an analysis, then came back with an idea. I didn't quite like that idea. And then I said, please um, just give me a better, give me the full trans, uh, the, the full code of what I need. And so then it gave me the full code and, and other things that I needed to input. And then it worked. Then it works. So crazy. So it's so crazy. So I'll show you. So now, now I've got I've got my transcription. And by the way, I'm connected to. Sorry, I didn't mention this at the start. I'm connected to Whisper at OpenAI and to trans. Uh, so I've got my own API key. I've got API keys to every AI service. I mean, you should as well. They're, they're so easy to set up, and they just enable. They're so cheap as well. It's crazy. Like Whisper is so cheap. Like to transcribe something probably doesn't even cost like one cent. Probably, probably doesn't. Um, and that, that goes for lots of aspects of, of, of AI, AI now. It's so, so cheap. I mean, there was a stat the other day that I heard that in one year, they've got costs down on actually, um, that they're charging. OpenAI has got them down 98%. I mean, it's just insane. Okay, so what I what I did here, so I'll show you, I'll show you how it works now. So it's, it's just simple. Like I've got my hotkey is shift and... I've obviously got to turn. I've got to turn it on. So that's that's one thing that you got to you got to remember as well is that, uh, and this is something that I'm going to try and improve. Like I don't want to have to go to my command prompt every time I want to turn this on, right? So what I um, need to do here to turn it on is you need a, it's a it's a it's a file, right? It's a file, and we need to copy this. We need to run this file. We need to run this file on our machine. Okay, so I paste this in here. And when I paste this this, this um, um, piece of text here, this basically runs it. This runs the runs the code. Runs. So you see here that I'm I've navigated to that part of my folder or that file in my folder, and now I'm going to run it. Okay. So it's come up here, and then this is now running on my machine. And then all I need to do is come in here and go Shift Space because that's the hotkeys that I used. Can you transcribe this comment for me and showcase how fast you can do the audio transcription and then also paste to my notebook? Crazy, right? Like that's so fast. That is so fast. And so you could keep you could keep uh, going if you want. So you see here, it sort of does it in the background. It shows you what you're doing. And so, but it's still on until I stop it. It's still on. So I could say I could I could go again. I could say. Can you showcase this some more and highlight how advanced the audio transcription has become? Can you also just write out some other I ideas that I might have? Sorry, that was just total gibberish, but we'll we'll let it transcribe it. And the other great thing, sorry, I'm, I've still got it running actually. The other great thing about this is it, it actually will rewrite your comments as well, it will know when you're putting in a full stop. So you see here, I didn't ask for a question, uh, a question mark, but it gave it to me. So that's what Wisp, why Wisp is so good. That's pretty good, isn't it? So yeah, it's got that one wrong, but it's probably my New Zealand accent, unfortunately. I mean, that is crazy. That is so cool, and I built that. Honestly, from start to finish, maybe 40 minutes. I mean, I maybe even half an hour. Half an hour. Now, improvements I could make. Let's let's just run a bit of a, a thing here. So let's just stay on this here. I'm gonna I'm going to show you something very cool. So I can come in here, I'm gonna go code extender paste this in I'm going to use this will use my Chrome plugin by the way I could also I could actually also use my my desktop one here I, like so because it's still on I could go shift enter can you have a look at this code and tell me some ways that we could improve it some ways that I'm thinking is I'd like to be able to have this running in the background without having to use my command prompt the other is making a better animation for when I'm recording so that the recording animation is actually right next to wherever the 
mouse is, and anything else creative that you can think of. I just realized I don't even really need my Chrome plugin anymore. I could just use this, right? I could use this across all my different things. I think I just paid a $3 per month subscription. So I don't know if it's even worth canceling it, but yeah, this is amazing. This is amazing. Okay, so let's just see what it comes back with. So remember that you can select any model in here. So I'm using Claude. I'm using my Claude model. You can also use the O1 models, etc. but they're a lot slower. That's the only thing you gotta, you gotta recognize. Here are some improvements and creative additions. To run the script in the background without the command prompt, create a system tray icon, package the script as an executable. Okay. I don't even know what that means, but I'm sure we can find out. Package as executable. Use py installer to create a standalone executable. Improve recording animation. Create a floating widget that follows the mouse cursor. Cool. Okay. So plenty of ideas there. So I'll, I'll, um, maybe I won't, I won't, uh, I won't go through the debugging of, of these right now, but maybe I'll do that in a follow-up video when I add these, but I think it just shows you, right? Just shows you how incredible, like I've never been able to do this. I would never have been able to do this until recently. Um, so it's just, just incredible. Okay. I'm going to round off, uh, just hopefully, hopefully getting a bit of inspiration here. <laughs>